Okay, let's just test, test the sound levels, make sure everything's sounding okay. So, appear to be okay for me. I'll check the sound again once I've got the aeroplane up and running to make sure it's sounding okay. Okay, so we are at Land's End Airport, or St Just, as it's properly called. So if I lower the drone camera down into the car park, and we'll go in through the, the normal passenger entrance, I guess. So make ourselves about the right height for a person. Go past the gate. So you can see here's the control tower building. Now, we can come in here, but for whatever reason, the scenery developers have kind of muddled this up a bit. So when we go in through the glass, we are stuck above the rafters all of a sudden. So this is just part of the stock uh, UK scenery. This isn't any special scenery I've installed to provide Land's End or St Just Airport. So if we just go and have a look around. You can see it's really nicely modelled. It's such a shame that they've made this decision about the the mapping of the um, where well, the clipping is for the, the cameras. So you can see you can almost read the... Well, you can read the, the menus. It's quite crazy, isn't it? Anyway, if we come back through this way, there's some outdoor seating. So as soon as we're outside, we can lower the camera back down again. So we can have a look in the tower while we're here. So it's got some quite basic modelling inside the tower, but it is there, which is better than you often get with the simulator. There's a few aeroplanes dotted around on the apron. We will be taking the Twin Otter. We've got it in the correct livery for the route. It's the, the Skybus livery. Again, I've downloaded the livery from FlightSim.2, so I'll try to update the notes of the video later on with all the correct download links. It's quite good, doesn't it? So this is an accurate aircraft, an accurate livery for the route. So the Skybus Twin Otters f actually fly the route out to the Isles of Scilly, or they used to at least. I'm not sure what the current status is of them. I'm sure somebody will let us know. Okay. Shall we go and get inside the aeroplane and see how we get on? So press the insert key and look down. We'll remove the um on the floor, don't we? It's a long time since I've tried out the Twin Otter, so our mileage with flying it may vary quite a lot. Let's see if I've still got the control mappings for it. I seem to remember it had quite specific um, controls. Have I got one called Twin Otter? There it was. It's a shame these aren't in an order, isn't it? Okay, so that should give us... Yep, the throttles are coming back to the right place, and then they go into reverse. That's good. So then we've got to control. If I remember, if I've done this correctly... Okay. So I've got the propellers on a button. It's interesting. So they're going to have to go to max anyway. And then I guess we're going to have to use the uh, the uh, mouse for the the fuel controls. I'm just getting it working out what is mapped to what on my controller here. So that was those. Okay. So that's the other way round. Okay. So at least now I know what's mapped to what. So, can we remember how to get this thing started up? That's the next question. Should we just get the yoke out of the way for the moment? So we can have a look around, see what we've got. We've got a GNS 530 and a 430. And we've got the, the boosters down here for the fuel pumps. 
Okay, I've, I've, it's it's coming back to me. We've got an altitude pre-selector. Not that we'll be needing it. We're only going to be flying 20 miles off the coast to go to the Isles of Scilly. And then you've got the controls up here. So we've got external battery. So we'll go battery and DC master on. So if I remember correctly, we need to come back and look overhead. We'll go and put our... Let's, can we press control six? That was it, yeah. So generators are no, are they in the off position or the on position? They're in the off position. It's quite it can fool your eye sometimes, can't it? The angle the camera is from things. So we don't need pito heat yet. We don't need the taxi lights yet. We are gonna go and turn the anti collision lights on at least. Uh, we can put the no smoking and the fasten seatbelt signs on. Um, okay, the views are very strangely set up. Uh, just check overhead again. So we've got engine ignition. Okay, we've got both, which is fine. So if we start right engine first. Sit and watch the animation for a few moments. We have to have the boost pumps on, don't we? And then we should be able to just advance, if I can get the buttons on the right way. The fuel, that's the wrong fuel lever I've just done. Okay, that's good. So we do the same again then for the left side. So it's not too difficult. Let's see. I'm just going to turn it down a bit so I can speak over the top of it. So this aeroplane did have a, a huge sound upgrade quite late in its life before Aerosoft pulled it from their store for whatever reason. We'll never know, will we, what went on there. Okay, so the GPS has woken up. Uh, what do we get down here then? We've got normal autopilot, and we've got the transponder. We'll put that on to standby for the moment. Uh, calibrate the altimeter, set the initial climb altitude. We're only going to fly to a couple of thousand feet, say two and a half maybe, which will be fine. Okay, so that engages the autopilot. So we can see we've got a pneumatic low pressure that will go away. We haven't got the generators on. I thought I turned them on. And that's the ignition. <laughs> uh, it was overhead, wasn't it? Generator. On. On. There we go. So then we can turn some more lights on. So we'll put the position lights on. The taxi light can come on. I think we're probably pretty good to go, actually. So let's try and do a shift P and see what happens, see where he attaches to the aeroplane. Normally obviously you do this before you start the engines, but we're going to see what happens. got the old bug where the um, trolley goes halfway underneath the aeroplane before it attaches and then suddenly it will snap back into place. She's about to chop herself into a thousand pieces on the propeller. 
and there she goes. So take the brakes off. Put the flaps to take off position. That's why we're here. So we'll tell her to stop. We'll put the parking brake on. So hopefully she'll pull away from the front of the aeroplane. Okay, we've um, we've muddled the sim up, haven't we? Where we pressed Shift P, look, we've now got two trolleys. Now they're both going to move away from us. <laughs> I love it when things like that happen. Okay. Sounds great, doesn't it? Should we put the head tracking on? There we go. Just going to centre it with me. There we go. So I can actually look around a little bit more easily. So which way is the wind? So we want to be running up from 2.5 really. So we're going to taxi along this runway. While we're taxiing, so we're flying from EGHC to EGHE. So should we get that basic route programmed in? If I can get anywhere near This is being a sound so. Okay, so while I'm doing that, I have no steering. So let me go and put myself on the parking area for 2.5 after rolling across the grass. And I'll do the, um, the rest of the autopilot once we're parked up and sat waiting. Okay. So there's our basic route. That's all we'll need. It's just to give us a, a direction to fly, basically. And um, we can put the, the bottom screen on the first page of its page group. So it gives us the numbers as well as showing the main direction we're flying on the top screen. It's kind of a nice combination to have. Okay, well, let's just have a check around, make sure everything looks okay. Got loads of fuel. That's not going to be a problem. Okay.
So watching the indicated airspeed. And start rotating. We'll do a circle before we um, get off on our way. Okay, so this is the only problem with this aeroplane is trying to grab the levers. You can see I can't actually grab unless I lean across the cockpit. I can't actually grab the levers to align them properly. It's a real pain with it. So if you're using the mouse to control the levers. Gorgeous scenery around here, isn't it? It's really lovely. Don't worry, I will actually get off on the route soon. I was just circling round to fly around the outside of the airfield and have a little look at some of this scenery because it's really lovely. So I'm flying with few clouds today because the real weather is atrocious right now. It's about 40 mile an hour winds and very low cloud cover so yeah it didn't make much sense to try and fly with it. Especially if we're going sightseeing around Isles of Scilly when we get there. Okay so here's St Just or Land's End Airport. We can inhibit the bank angle warning if we want to. So I guess it makes sense while we're here. We may as well go and fly down towards the most westerly point of the UK mainland. We'll fly over it on the way out. So if I go and show you this on the map where we're going. We're heading straight for Land's End as it's called. And then we'll go past the Longships Lighthouse. As you can see over there. So I just noticed the comment, yes, I completely forgot to do auto feather and I can't remember off the top of my head where the auto feather controls are. So if 
Why have I still got pneumatic low pressure? Okay, I have to go more than 50% on the throttle. Just above the altitude indicator. Hang on, let's have a look at the um Island, uh, sorry, the um, lighthouse on our way out. It's quite nicely done, isn't it? The helipad on the top. So I'm just looking at this. I'm just having a look at the map as well while we're here. So we need to be turning left. And I'm looking above, we've got the altitude pre-selector here. So there's the altimeter, you're saying just above the altitude selector. So yeah, there's the pre-selector. So you've got trim. There is no control here for... This thing, no, that's Am I being completely blind here? Yeah, I um just in the comment from Alexander Metzger. This aeroplane is not realistic, and I'm going to make no apologies for that. All I've done is trimmed it out to be efficient through the air, so we're running a lot less throttle and a lot less, a lot less pitch than you would have used. And yes, it's not modelled realistically. I have no doubt that would have damaged the engine in some way. In the real thing, but there's no way of of checking that. So we're getting low pressure again because I haven't quite got enough throttle again. Am I being, I must be being completely and utterly blind here. I'm looking for an auto feather switch. That's the autopilot switch. You've got altitude, indicated airspeed, back course, approach, nav mode, oh, auto feather. Sorry. I was being completely and utterly blind. Just shows I've, I haven't flown this plane for maybe 18 months. And it shows. But yeah, the, um, it's not realistic at all. You can basically flick half these switches to do with controlling the engines and the temperatures, and they don't do anything. The same with the, the fuel pumps and stuff. They don't really do anything. The boost pumps. None of it really works. And again, although it's got an auto feather, it doesn't actually do anything. It's just a switch you can light on. There's a lot of... Aer Aerosoft tend to be guilty of this quite a lot. The CRJs are like it as well. There's a lot of buttons you can press, but they don't do anything. So they light up, and you can pretend they're doing something. 
I think um, Aerosoft are kind of, they, they strike a good balance of, um, you can have some fun with the aeroplane, but it's not actually going to do a lot. Okay, so we just come up to a thousand feet. If we dial this back down, and we'll engage autopilot, go for, actually where's the heading bug? Where is it? Okay, oh, this, the heading, the head tracking is having a nightmare today for some reason. It's all over the place. So while we're killing some time on the way, Let's have a play with the wind. Let's see what the, we the real weather was like. It was not nice. Oh, he says that. Look, he's cleared up a bit. When I looked in an hour ago, it was pretty wicked. But we have got... Oh, it's down to 26 knots, so it's 20 knots less than it was. Yeah, there's only, just reading the comments there, there's only two or three planes in Float Simulator that are actually accurate. That will bite you back. An awful lot of them, like all of the Coronados, for example, it's like having a toy steering wheel stuck on the back of the car seat that you have for a child. <laughs> Some of the big jets are very good, though. And some of the business jets are very, very good. But it's, it's frustrating when they don't quite work as they should. I think a really good example is the ATR, where if you don't do things the way they've programmed it, even though it's logical what you're doing, it won't work. So it's almost like, you know, they haven't really simulated what's connected to what properly. Let's have a play with changing altitude. Where is, why has that gone down to zero on the pre-selector? Okay, it was just doing pitch hold by the look of it then. So has this still got the same bug it always had? Yeah, it's... So that didn't affect the pre-selector. But now it is, look. It catches up. Yeah, the bug is still there then. They've never fixed it, have they? So it used to be, if there was a dis discrepancy between them, the more you turned this, the closer this would get to it over time until it matched it. Interesting. And yeah, the um, the programming of this autopilot is slightly different from several of the other aircraft, just to make it more fun. I'm just trying out things to see what affects it in what way. Okay, that's behaving. I 
I do wonder what went on though that caused this aeroplane to disappear from the store. It must have been somebody left somewhere. It's, I guess somebody left Aerosoft that had the rights to the aeroplane. That works. Even though we are still well within speed. Interesting. So the stall warning comes on quite early. Yeah, the head tracking is drifting. Look, if I straighten my face up, I'm looking straight up now. It's having a really, really bad day for some reason. Yeah, interesting is a very politically correct way of saying this isn't working like it should. There's no pressure spinner in this cockpit, is there, to show you if the propellers are synchronised or not. It's a shame. I wonder if you can get them to phase if you reduce one throttle. No. Let's try it from outside, see if we can hear it. It is reducing thrust on one side. So if I reduce the left throttle, for example. Let's watch that from behind and see if the rudder goes. So I'm going to reduce the left engine. And we're getting a small amount of right rudder, maybe? Mm, it's not obvious, is it? Okay, so we're almost here. Let's come off the autopilot. So which island are we coming into first? St Martin's to begin with. doing the same look and look at my mouse is nowhere near the throttles and yet I can't grab the propeller levers so maybe they pulled it for good reason <laughs> although I think you can still buy it in the marketplace so I might be wrong
looks like they put some custom rocks in. It's a shame they're popping in. Yeah, the pop-up's all horrible, isn't it? Looks good, though, on screenshots. Well, it would look good on screenshots. custom rocks. Really nicely done ones actually. Very cool. So the thing that got my attention is there looks to be a sailing boat out here. So we'll try and catch up with it before we come back into St Mary's. So the big island is St Mary's. Slowing us, slowing us down a bit so we can come past the sailing ship and have a nice look at it. Very cool. 
I guess seeing as we come all the way out to this lighthouse, we may as well go look at it. get some speed up and some altitude and go back to St Mary's. So St Agnes is the first island, so we may as well circle St Agnes while we're here. So yeah, this is a, a scenery download from FlightSim.2 which introduces an awful lot more realism into the scenery on the islands and the water masking and things like that. So the buildings are you know, pretty much absolutely correct. lots of boats in the harbours. Okay, so here we are, St Mary's. We'll have a good look around this, we'll fly around it a little bit. So let's do this from the outside view maybe. The details is ridiculous, isn't it? They really have gone to town on it. So let's circle round left and then we'll come down over the town. slowed us right down, we're hanging on the flaps so we can have a good look as we go around.
right on the limit of the flaps to be able to come in this slowly unless we throw out more flaps but then we'll man lose manoeuvrability. I don't want to go too fast otherwise we won't get a chance to see things. So I'm keeping an eye on the airspeed the whole time. The wind is kicking up over this headland and throwing us around. I don't know if you noticed that. So here's the airport at St Mary's. Obviously this is massively upgraded from the stock one. So we'll come in and have a taxi around in a few minutes. So I'm just going to go around the rest of the island first. Should we go and say hello to this boat on the way past? Looks like a catamaran of some description. Okay. being thrown around quite a lot by the wind. So that looks like tents, so that I imagine will be where the scout camp is, I'm not entirely sure. There's an awful lot of tents there wasn't there? There's a big mast coming up, we'll have to be careful of. The hot turbulence is awesome, isn't it? We are being chucked around. That's that realistic weather I was talking about. So we've got like 30 knot winds potentially coming over this headland and throwing us around. Suddenly it's gone smooth, look. Now we're in the ahead of the where the the air is hitting the headland. It's nice and smooth again. So we've got a 30 knot wind. So we want runway 27. So we'll overfly, turn left and circle in. Look at this craziness, the, the amount we're crabbing, we're pointing that way, flying about 20 degrees off track.
see how we do, shall we? Just to give you some heads up of what we're doing here. Just lining up for runway 27. Looking at the puppy lights as well. We've got one red, we want two whites, two reds ideally. So what we could also do is turn the rudder in to the runway. And keep the aeroplane pointing in rudder direction and then just roll to traverse either way. We're too high at the moment. You end up going up hill here, don't you? Whoa! I'm almost at maximum. Whoa! I got pulled down into the ground then. You can see the aeroplane skittering all over. So I was almost maximum right rudder deflection then to keep it pointed rudder direction. That's uh, a runway direction. That's an interesting approach. In nice weather it would be easy. Today was very, very difficult. going to ignore the other aeroplanes. <laughs> I'm just going to park on this far side. Okay, so just for the moment while we're sat here we'll go and shut the engines down. And we're going to go and have a nose around and look at the buildings. Okay, so we won't be gone for too long, otherwise the batteries will go flat. <laughs> but let's go and have a look around the building. Scoff, grub and food. <laughs> oh cool, they've got animated people in here. And cakes. <laughs> Very cool. Oh my word, this is good enough resolution that you can actually read it. That's mad. Oh, and if we have a look down here... Oh, there's our aeroplane! Very, very cool. And there's the lighthouse we visited a few minutes ago. Whoops. Just trying to get this to... The Bishop's Rock Lighthouse, as somebody correctly said on the, the live stream. Okay, so let's go and carry on around. So we've got the Skybus Twin Otter seating plan. It's 
very well done, isn't it? Sky bus, ferry bus, I guess that goes from the middle of um, the town down in St Mary's. Oh, there's more. There's more. Let's go and have a look. Oh, it's just piles of luggage. <laughs> so obviously this is um, for the logistics. So let's have a look in the tower. Very cool. He needs to press um, what's the keyboard combination that rotates your screen back around. <laughs> Oh, we've got one more building, or one more room we haven't looked in. Okay, that's like the, um... I have no idea what they use that room for. Storing stuff. Solar panels on the roof. It's very well done, isn't it? Look at the scenery around it as well. It's really nice. She can look at some of the details, see how well modelled they are. That's just insane, isn't it? They've really gone to town on this. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? Should we get this started again? Did it again, look. And now, oh my word. I'm going to shut them both down. It's almost like a random number generator, what happens with the... Um, with the fuel... You know, with what gets clicked on. If I give it no option but to do the right one... Let's have a look at the wind. 20 knots, so we still want runway 27, don't we? So we need to go backtrack along. I'm going to cut across the grass to avoid the tanker.
can we accelerate up this slope is the question. I've got a boot full of right rudder. <laughs> that turbulence is crazy. Okay, so back towards the mainland. So we want to be going, are we going straight back to Land's End? So if we measure 70 degrees, but yeah, the wind will be behind us all the way, so it shouldn't take too long. We'll take it up to 3,000 on the way back. Uh, so we should be able to arm that. Yeah, it's behaving itself now. Should we line up the course with where we're going? Is there a VOR on the end of the coast there is one one four two zero See, this is nowhere near what we asked for. This is the, the same old bug. What you have to do to get it to fix itself, or you ha used to have to, 
would be rotate this around. But to be honest, I'm just going to go for altitude hold. There was a horrible bug between the altitude pre-selector and the autopilot altitude selector where they didn't stay in sync and they still haven't fixed it. I don't think, well, they're never going to fix it. So we're heading back to Land's End. Obviously, the, just playing with the radio kit, the um, tuning in the VOR means we get the HSI up and running. We never actually turn the transponder on, but we're never doing, we're not doing ATC anyway. Just looking around, it's got an ADF. Where do you tune in? The ADF. Ah, there it is. I don't think there are any non-directional beacons down this part of the world. I may be wrong. Oh, there's one over here, look. Uh, Cold Rose Naval Base, 370. Well, I bet the range on it isn't very far, though. 15 miles. Yeah, which is about... that. you know, not, not very far at all. Which isn't good enough for us. The Land's End VOR range is... 200 miles. So, let's see what the wind is doing on the ground at Land's End. Uh, if we just hover over it, it will give us the Metar, won't it, on that map. 240, 17 knots. Let's do that again. So it's coming in from this direction. So we want to, runway 25 will come in on. So if we just do a left pattern around the airfield come in visually. What livery and plane? I'm in the Twin Otter and I'm in the Skybus livery which is the actual company that do the ferrying back and forth or used to between um, the Isles of Scilly and the mainland. See if this is going to behave itself. Yeah, so you just have to be really careful that the pre-selector and the uh, the um, autopilot can can differ from each other can't really use the pre-selector anymore and if you deviate too far with this you end up having to wiggle this up and down to get the altitude to match and if they don't match the autopilot I think the autopilot follows this and it, it just drives you around a twist okay so where are we coming in we're coming in to yeah let's come off the autopilot anyway that's the airfield so let's circle round to the left. We'll do left circuit because then obviously we can see out of the left window most easily. So the wind's behind us.
about the weather windmills, we'll eh? That wind pushing us sideways. <laughs> this is going to be a hover landing. We are almost not going forwards. That's funny. We had the same thing there, where the wind coming over the hilltop pulled us down. Okay. Let's 
checking around a few things before we say goodbye to the airplane. That's bizarre. I haven't seen the logbook in a long time. Interesting. You can hear the wind whistling. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that. That was a quick trip from uh, Land's End over to the Isles of Scilly, which was a Flight Sim.2 version of the Flights of Scilly. I think it was Super Spud that created it. And then back to Land's End again. So, I'll see you again soon. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, I have no idea what the next thing I do will be. It might be something a bit more realistic using an aeroplane that actually works properly. But I just hadn't been in the, um, the Twin Otter for a very long time, so it was good to get back to it and have a look at it again. It's a shame it's um, disappeared, because yeah, it was, it was good fun. Even though the Aerosoft planes typically aren't very accurate, you know, they're, kind of, they're just good fun. And there's lots to do in them, but none of it really matters. <laughs> we'll um, see you again soon. Take care.